Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at Two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hi Marsha. Okay, big news. Yes. Let's talk. Yes. Big news. Big news. <laughs> so the trailer pickup finally happened. Yay. Yeah. It, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. So we went up to, or we're down south, south of us, to Pismo Beach. They have the Pismo, um, Pismo Trailer Rally. And it's at mm-hmm. Pismo Coast Village, which is an RV park in Pismo Beach. And, mm-hmm. oh, it was so fun. It was all vintage trailers. You have no idea how many different varieties of vintage trailers there are. Mm-hmm. Um, it was amazing. You know, most of the park, there was there were some sections of the park that were just regular modern RVs. And probably the majority of the park was full of vintage trailers of all shapes and sizes. Um, and they have mm-hmm. a... Um, and, and one of them, I guess I should be more specific. And one of them was ours because the people who worked on our trailer go to this rally every year. And it's kind of like knockers, you know, like the retreats where Mm -hmm. if you, if you go one year, then you have priority to get in Mm -hmm. and to actually get that same trailer spot the following Mm -hmm. year. And so, I mean, there are actually people who weren't there. Um, but you know, bought their spot, didn't cancel and get a refund. Oh, so they, mm-hmm. so they'll have it for next year. Okay. So, and there are people who have been going for, you know, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know how long it's been going on, but you know, they've been going for a number of years. And since everybody mm-hmm. stays in their same campsite, once they get the one they want, they're like neighbors, you know, they, they know each mm-hmm. other, they're, they, they know the people camping around them. And so as this whole community, uh, I was talking to one man and I said, oh, this is like a giant rabbit hole. And he's like, oh, you, you have no idea how deep this rabbit hole is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the, it's a version of spinning, learning to spin, right? <laughs> like people, yes. like they don't even want to drop spindle because they're going to go down that rabbit mm-hmm. hole. So this is this kind of the mm-hmm. same thing. And oh, the people, people there had, like, this was the trailer that they bought to the, brought to the rally, but... The one they usually bring is something else or the one they camp in or or I was talking to one couple and they said, yeah, we're going to we're going to be at the one in November, but we're not sure if we're going to bring this one or we'll bring our other one. So they have like trailer stash. I was just (laughs) thinking that trailer stash. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. And then and then people would talk about, well, this is my forever trailer. So, mm-hmm. like, you have a trailer, but you have aspirations for a different trailer. And then, you know, you sell one trailer and buy another trailer. And anyway, it's a whole world that I didn't, you know, we had not ever done rallies before. And so this is a whole mm-hmm. world that that um, we are entering into. And the reason we got to enter into it, I mean, we had talked about going, you know, going to one or, you know, getting a reservation, at trying to get into one. Um, but we got kind of thrown into the deep end because um, they were coming down and they were going to be bringing a different trailer. But since we hadn't been able to pick up ours in April, they said, well, what if we bring yours down and then we'll just stay, you know, stay in a hotel and you can stay in the mm-hmm. trailer. So that and then they showed it during the open house, you know, so that the public could see it. Mm-hmm. Um but we, we were kind of mean. We didn't have the public traipsing in and out of our trailer. 
we have. Well, it's like <laughs> getting a new car and everybody else gets to drive it before you get to right. drive it, right? Like you, you don't want people, yeah. So we had, you know, we had barriers. So, and a lot of people, a lot of people in the, in the park did that, or at least had one part of their trailer that had barriers or like they knew to have, you know, multiple rugs that no, aren't normally on the ground while they're camping, but be, on the public day where everybody was coming in. You know, just to protect their floors and stuff. And we had none of that because we were just, you know, literally just arriving with the bare minimum camping equipment so that we could spend a night in the trailer Mm -hmm. before we brought it home. So anyway, but it was really fun. And so they spent a lot of time with the public and answering questions and all that. And Robert and I didn't really have to Mm -hmm. deal with the crush of people, um, you know, coming coming to the site to look at the trailer. But... It was like the bell of the ball, you know. It's a mm-hmm. n- n- the new trailer on the block. The you know, there aren't very many 1950s Westcrafts, and so when a new one is restored and comes out, you know, sort of like its debut. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot yeah. of excitement. There was a lot of excitement at the park, so we had a lot of people coming by and. You know, not during the public open house, but the rest of it, coming by and talking to us. And we met s- so many fun people, and they, uh, it was just, it was a really nice event. Mm-hmm. So, and the trailer is nice. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so big. I mean, it's not really that big. <laughs> when I first saw it, I thought, okay, good. In my head, it had grown to this enormous proportions. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I saw it, I thought, oh, good. It is still kind of small. You know, it's, it's bigger, way bigger yeah. than our other one, but it's not enormous. Yeah. Yeah, way bigger. So your other one, you know, uh, one person had to sit while the other person moved around. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of, you know. This one, you you can both move around mm-hmm. without. To me, it doesn't feel too big inside. Like it's. No. Know, it Like those big fifth wheels that people have. You know, those are huge, you know. It, um, With the things that stick, you know, the extent. What do you call those pop outs and stuff? Those become huge, right? This is still really small. Yeah, um, yeah. But it standards. feels really open. Just like the other mm-hmm. trailer, it feels a little more spacious because of the mm-hmm. layout. Mm-hmm. The other trailer felt more spacious because of the windows. And yeah. this one feels feels that way because of the light wood and the and the um the kind of the layout. But anyway, it was yeah. it was a lot of fun and I think there's going to be um there's going to be more trailer rallies in my future. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's not the kind of camping I'm used to, but it was a fun event. Um, yeah. It's like yeah. a big party. Yes. I say you're going to have a whole new set of friends. Right. <laughs> you have work friends. I'm your uh, your one college friend. Like, I guess I'm left over from college. Me, left but, over. Um, but then <laughs> my, my the left over, your left over. <laughs> 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 so funny. Um, you know, but then uh, you're knitting, you know, work people, mm-hmm. knitting people, trailer people, yeah. mm-hmm. bee people. I'm not sure. Anyway, just a whole new adventure. And it was interesting how much I learned talking mm-hmm. to people who knew a lot more about this particular make of trailer um, than I did. Robert knew more than mm-hmm. than I did. But but we we both learned a lot from people who came by and told us a little bit and and then the people who did their own work on the trailers oh my gosh so impressive mm-hmm. all this work that that people did you know on their own in their garage yeah. so you know so that's a different that's yeah. a whole different aspect of it from mm-hmm. from what we did where we bought it and had it had it restored mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. it's a it's a whole other world to enter which will be really fun I'm looking forward yeah. to camp. We're going camping in June. So I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to actually camping in it. Um, you know, regular camping trip and and mm-hmm. and just seeing what it's like to be in this trailer. The bed is nice. It's bigger. It's not as big as um, a regular double bed. It's slightly smaller. But it's a lot mm-hmm. better than slightly bigger than a single <laughs> with two people in it <laughs> so it was your other one was bigger than it It was was it the size of a single bed it was a little trailer? bit bigger than a single bed but not much i couldn't okay. get a, a twin i couldn't get a twin sheet on it really i mean i could uh-huh. 
I could fudge it to get a twin sheet on it, mm. but it was it was definitely too big for a twin sheet, but but not much. So maybe mm-hmm. maybe a couple of inches wider than a twin bed. But this one is is much more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's nice. And we have yeah. a bathroom, which is also nice. And a shower. Which I didn't I mean that wasn't something that I really cared about, but but Robert wanted the shower. And it's actually I didn't know they did this in trailers, but it's like a like on the train where the whole room is, it's called a wet bath, and the whole room mm-hmm. becomes the shower. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how that's going to work exactly, but. Yeah. Yeah, well, and also, too, the, um, you actually have a refrigerator, right? The Where your other uh, trailer wasn't in an ice box? That's true. I have forgotten about that. Yeah, that's yeah. the other upgrade yeah. that we have is from an yeah. ice box to a, an actual refrigerator. It's a small, you know, mm-hmm. it's a small refrigerator. Um but I'm used to a small refrigerator at home, too. Yeah. Yeah. It runs on the electricity. So if we don't have shore power, what they call shore power, where you can plug in, mm-hmm. um, we won't have a refrigerator. Because it won't run yeah. with the 12 yeah. volt or the, or the um, it, you won't get enough power from the inverter solar mm-hmm. pow- power to run the refrigerator. But that's okay. Yeah. We're used to yeah. camping with dry yeah. ice and yeah. an ice box, so. We can manage with that. That's yeah. not a problem. Well, very exciting. And then um, and then I'll see it when you come up to Albany, Oregon mm-hmm. for the Black Sheep Gathering the end of June. So Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll be having a for, for anybody who's going to Black Sheep Gathering that Saturday. So Black Sheep is the weekend of June twenty fourth through twenty sixth. And so that Saturday, which I guess would be the twenty fifth. That afternoon, late afternoon, maybe three thirty, four o'clock, um, we'll be having a meetup at at the. We're calling it the club car, you know, like the mm-hmm. trains have a club car. So, mm-hmm. I who suggested that? I can't. Oh, oh, um, the father of the woman who bought the clubhouse. He asked me, mm-hmm. "Oh, is your new trailer? Does your new trailer have a name?" And I said, "No, we haven't. We really haven't thought about that." And I told him about it, and he's, "Oh." Oh, you should call it the first. He said you should call it the caboose, and then he said, "No, mm-hmm. I know what you should call it. You should call it the club car." And yeah, so that's perfect. <laughs> so we're going to be calling it the club car, and I've got mm-hmm. train placemats and a couple of train menus. So that stuff has been um, arriving in the mail, and so it'll have a little bit of a th- a little bit of a theme, not as much as as the other trailer was giants themed, but, mm-hmm. but anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to have a meetup at the club car at the black sheep gathering. So mm-hmm. come in, say hi and show us what you bought and mm-hmm. have some food and drink and gather with other crazy yarn people <laughs> <laughs> who, who are, who are on their way to maybe becoming crazy trailer people. <laughs> yes, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, should we should we talk projects or Yeah. Let's go ahead and and talk projects. Do you want me to go yeah, first? Go ahead. Um uh, I have a finished project. Woo! <laughs> I wish I could say it was my garter squish blanket. It is not. Um I needed a break. Because I have to say, you remember I think the last time we recorded, I was struggling with some of my projects. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a, a couple, it's been months now I've been struggling with my projects and, uh, I think you said, oh, just cast something on. So I cast on the depth hat by Talitha Kuomi. And to remind people, this was the, um, the yarn I bought at, uh, stitches and it's the fiber seed sprout special speckles DK. And the colorway is dirty seahorse. And this one, to remind people, it's like they, it's like they had taken the, the the hank of yarn and dipped one half in solid uh, a solid teal, and the other half is speckled with teal and brown and some black. And so when you knit the hat, um, it pools, and it would pool. It, it's supposed to pool, so you have you know um, the dark sections going up the sides of the hat and the the speckled sections going up the front and back of the hat. So let me just say, 
did not happen for me. I <laughs> And there's this whole technique that you're supposed to do about how you can, finding the place uh, when you start, you just don't cast on. Uh, any random place in the yarn, there's description about how, where you're, the point where you're supposed to find in the color. I think you're at the halfway point in the solid color yarn is where you cast on. They tell you what type of cast on you do. I did all of that. It's an interesting hat and in where you, you knit, um, I don't remember how many rows, but you knit and then you put in a pearl row and then knit more and then pick up the, the cast on edge. So it become it's knitted into the body of the hat. Hmm. I'm not describing. Do you know what I mean? I'm not describing that very well. Uh, well, I I sort of saw the picture. It's a folded edge, kind of a hem, right? Yeah, yeah. So and that looks really nice. I like that. Um, I could not get the pooling to work the way they it's supposed to. What, what I was so captivated by when I saw the yarn and the pattern at stitches, it spirals. And what they tell you to do is to go down a needle size um, or up a needle size in the if if to control the pooling mm-hmm. so that it all stays in that one section or uh, so like you're switching pull. needles in the middle. Yes. Okay. And also, and the other technique to to do that, and also um, to pull the yarn really tight. So if you're knitting along, when you get to the solid section. Um, pull that yarn really tight onto the needles or go down a needle mm-hmm. size or the opposite. But it didn't tell you to like pull out yarn if if you get to the no. part that's supposed to be solid and you're still on speckled yarn, no. just pull it out till you have solid yarn and knit with that. No. Okay. So I'm a little disappointed that I did not get mm-hmm. that look. It just spirals. It's fine. I mean, it looks okay. Did you swatch? Yes. Oh, because it also said in the pattern, they said you have to swatch and get your gauge has to be accurate because that right. will affect the pooling. Mm-hmm. And my gauge, my uh, my swatch and the gauge was correct. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what I did wrong. Um, Probably nothing. Yeah, I don't know. It's like they are individually hand dyed. Right. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't think so, but possibly. The other thing I want to say about this pattern, it does not say... There's no description on the the print of the pattern about how the, it tells you how to finish the, you know, to close up the top of the hat, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't give you a description of it. Like when it's talking about like, oh, this hat has a, you know, a hem, Mm -hmm. a folded hem and there's nothing. So, and the picture does not show the top of the hat. And the reason I'm saying all this is I had no idea how it was supposed to look. And so what it really is like, Imagine you ha- you're on the top of your head now. You're going to have 1990s pleated khakis. <laughs> you know how ca- there used to be a pleat on khakis, and now that was all out. You know now it's back. I think pleats are coming back, but it's basically it's like you have four pleats on top. Mm. So I, I'm not even explaining because that it's very kind well, of like I mean, in order to keep the pooling happening. Right. And not change as you decrease. You really can't have mm-hmm. decreases. So you have yeah, to take the top of the hat like a like the pussy hat, but then instead of having those points on the ears on the sides, they have mm-hmm. to do something to make it come to a a top yes. of a hat. And so when you're when you get to the part where you're going to um close up that hole, um you put some of the you put a groups of nine stitch nine stitches on four double pointed needles. So you go nine stitches and then you put twenty one stitches on your circular needles, nine stitches on the double pointed needle, nine stitches on the double mm-hmm. pointed needle, another twenty one stitches on the circular needle, and then another nine stitches on the double pointed needles. You then do a um, three needle bind off on the first and fourth double pointed needle Mm -hmm. and this is where i got screwed up is you you continue on to needle double pointed needle number three and number two i screwed excuse me two and Mm -hmm. three and knit across do the and bind those off so they become joint and then you have your 21 stitches on half of the circular needles and the other 21 stitches on the other half of the needle and you do a Kitchener stitch to yeah. um, 
So that's so like that covering these, up the, the yes. Other so these group the these two sets of nine stitch bind offs then are underneath that mm-hmm. twenty one stitch flap. I don't know if that makes sense. I at think all that, that would I be described. really challenging to actually knit without knowing what it was supposed to be doing. Like now that yes. you're done and you know what it did, but that would be a yes. really challenging thing to knit without any picture to say, oh, I'm doing and something I, and really I, weird here. <laughs> yes. And it looks nice, mm-hmm. you know, like, and I, and I, to your point, they, it's a, it's a great um, solution to keep that patterning. Right. Otherwise, if you did it to your point is if you did the decreases, which threw up all of the pooling of which I did not get, but anyway, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But again, a shout out to Ravelry and all the people who've made this hat who posted pictures of their hat is by looking at their pictures, I was then able to figure out what I, I, I had an, you know, a visual of what I was trying to do, mm-hmm. where the pattern, there's no picture of the top of the hat um, right? and no description of it kind of other than just the the instructions about how to close this up. So do you remember I call, I, I think I texted you, oh my God, this looks odd. Cause I, I bound it off and it looked like a, a four corner hat kind of, yeah. it was terrible. <laughs> it looked terrible. <laughs> it, basically it looked like, um, yeah, you had, <laughs> you had like four points. Yes. And, and a really funky And they were not even, in the even. Middle. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah, because some were really tight because they were the three needle bind off, mm-hmm. the two sets of nine, and then the twenty one stitches that were K- Kirchner was all kind of loose because they were Kitch not Kirchner Kitchener, Kitchener yeah. stitch. And um, anyway, I poured myself a beer, <laughs> got on to laid on my bed with the dog next to me, and started looking at Ravelry to see, and there was no notes. But just looking at people's, the photographs on people's projects, I was able to figure it out. And so I made myself rip it out and then re-knit up a little bit and then thought, okay, I think I understand the concept of what's happening. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyway, so that's what beer is for. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Uh, Oh, my goodness. Okay. So anyway, that's done. But that, but I have to say, again, it sort of goes into this. I was thinking, oh, I'm just, you know, okay, it's not, I'm disappointed. It's not pooling the way it's supposed to pool. I'm getting this spiral. I can live with it. It's okay. And then that end of that hat, I thought, I really am struggling with a lot of my projects. Yeah. Anyway, I will then go on. Garter squish blanket. I have not a whole lot to report on that. I am really ready for this to be done. I do apologize too. I was listening to the last episode where I was knitting on it while we were recording. And um, I was listening as I was walking. And so and all I could hear were those needles. Bang, bang. It's oh my, they were so loud. So I do apologize. for. So I'm not knitting on that now as I'm sitting here. Um, it's also too big for it to sit on my lap. But anyway, I'm on color 14, about halfway through color 14 of 16. Oh, you're close. So I'm almost you're done. Close. I'm getting close. I'm ready for it to be done. I'm beginning to just hate this project <laughs> because I, <laughs> I, I really like it, but I'm sick of it. Yeah, I want to move yeah. on to something else. So, um, but we have, uh, I'll just put, uh, there's a good time to put this in here that um, the, our blanket along uh, ends May 31st. So what is today we're recording on? 25th I don't even know what today is. It's the 25th of May. So so okay. not quite a week. So I will get it done. I'm pretty sure I'll get it done, but I, I <laughs> <laughs> ready for it to be done. Yes. Okay. Um, I have nothing new to report on the the unpatterned top-down raglan pullover by Karen Alfke that I'm making for Ben. I have nothing to report except he's coming home today. Um, this is the you know, memorial. This is the Wednesday before Memorial Day, so he has a long weekend, and so he's coming home today uh, at some point. So um, hopefully, in the next couple of days, he can put it on. I was and I can say, see. yeah, you can pin him down. Yes, <laughs> um, uh, to see how it's how the body is and etc. So uh, not much to report on that. 
then my next project is the sweater that I'm making for my brother and Kelly. We before we started recording, we looked it up on. Um, yes, we googled it in the and it's trocha. Tro- wait, wait, trocha. Trocha. V. Trocha v. Minster. Minster, which we believe means sweater, sweater pattern. <laughs> sweater with a round pattern. <laughs> And which I have to laugh because guess what it says in parentheses after Trogia Vidminster? Mm. It says sweater with round pattern. Mm-hmm. So we finally figured out that that's what it and um and if anybody wants to give us feedback if we're not saying that yes. the correct way. Ha- our our foreign correspondent could tell us uh-huh. uh, how to pronounce that in Faroese a little bit better and maybe the mm-hmm. translation. But we did we did yeah. find a, a mm-hmm. Faroese translation site pronunciation site um, mm-hmm. online, and we're we're probably not doing it justice, but <laughs> but we're trying. <laughs> so I just have to give you a little update on this. So I, um, yes, I Marcia, unraveled. How many times have you start restarted this sweater? <laughs> Well, I will tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so we're not counting the atlas anymore. So I knit the whole body of the atlas, mm-hmm. and uh, and the sleeve. I mean, I pretty much knit the whole sweater, didn't I? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did I do the sleeves? Yes. I, was, mm-hmm. I didn't do all the sleeves. I don't think, but I because he tried it on, it was way too small. Moving beyond that, that's how Cat, in- <clears throat> excuse me, Cat actually inspired me to actually look at a Faroese sweater. Since the yarn is Navia tradition, which is a Faroese yarn. So I found this pattern and I did my swatch, did not get gauge on the, it's supposed to use a size nine needle, did not get gauge with that. I got gauge with the size eight. So Kelly, I got gauge. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what my problem is. Um, so I got Gage, and when we went down to the beach two weeks ago, I guess we were down there, I cast on uh, the size. I think I was going to make – oh, no, I don't remember now what size I was going to make for my brother. I've got the pattern right here. It'd be like I was going to make the medium. Mm-hmm. Say if there was like an extra small, small, medium, and then a large, and it keeps going up. I decided I was going to make it the medium because I thought that would be okay with the um, with my Gage. So I cast on and I knit all the ribbing. I did the color work that's uh, just above the ribbing and I did about an inch of the body and I started looking at it and I thought, this looks awfully small. So I thought, screw it, I'm ripping it out. So I ripped it out and I recast on the next size up. So I'm making the large. So I, again, did the ribbing, the color work. I knit about, I would say, probably nine inches of the the body. Mm Mm-hmm. And when I was home, I decided to put it on waste yarn and wash and block it, which I did. And it's going to fit. Oh, It's going to be roomy enough. That's good news. Oh, my gosh. So now I'm knitting on it. And I have knit about, uh, I think I've knit about 13, 14 inches on it. And I have to knit till about 18 inches, set it aside, and then I'll do the sleeves and attach them. So it's been a, a bit of a nightmare, I have to say. <laughs> this this whole project, I don't know. Anyway, and then the other thing I say is that with this sweater, um, I need four colors. Where with the atlas, I needed three, mm-hmm. the main color and two contrasting. With this pattern, sweater with round pattern, um, I need the main color and three contrasting colors for the color work. And I have the... Color work is like a light robin's egg blue and a navy. And the body of the sweater is like a bright grass green kind of. So um, when we were together when I was down there, I think for knockers, I think it was, I ordered um, just a natural color, a white or a cream color, Mm -hmm. and which arrived. Mark didn't think he liked that. He wanted a color. So I think I have mentioned this before that I ordered that. Uh, ball from Navia on the Faroe Islands and it took about a month but it arrived and he wanted red it's a bright red I'm not sure I have to say I'm not Mm -hmm. sure I like the red with 
a bright Kelly green, a a Robin's egg blue, and a navy. Have you had? He really likes it. So you've you've put the red in already. In the I have not put the red in. It's only in the the, neck color work. It's not in the. It's only in the yolk. Yeah, Yeah, just a couple of rows. It's not going to be very much. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see. Mm -hmm. I've got a ways. um, But I have to tell you about the 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 package from Navia. It came in an envelope. It was all when I um, the envelope was wrapped with yarn, like <laughs> sort of twine, and a piece of Navia tradition yarn oh. wrapped around it and tied with a little bow on the outside of the package. <laughs> so, oh my gosh! The part was that went to the still post on there. Wow! And it stayed on. Nice. Yeah, it stayed on there all the way from the Faroe Islands. It stayed on there. That yarn wrapped around there and the bow and everything, and then. Um, Opened up and beautifully wrapped in tissue paper with a little sticker on it that said thank you. It's just super, super sweet and very exciting to get that dropped off on my front porch. So that's what's going on with that. And then I go down every day. I spend for 10, 15 minutes, just a little bit on that Manx. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm still spinning on that. So and I am, Kelly, I am going to bring my spinning wheel to Black Sheep. Because I'm planning on doing, I've never been able to bring it because right. we've either taken the train or something. Mm-hmm. I've not had space, but I am bringing that wheel so I can sit in the spinning circle oh, or, good. Spin, yeah. or sit by the trailer and spin. So mm-hmm. nice. So anyway, that's all I have for Pat for projects, and I'm really hoping I've now moved past my problems. Oh, me too. Do you think? Because I've gone, I've gone through kind of a. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a rough. I don't patch. know. It's like. I've had some bad juju. I don't really know what that's about, but it's just yeah. some, yeah. It's been a little so bit hoping... of a rough patch with your knitting. Yes. Maybe you need to do some crochet. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if it's like if I just crochet placemats or, or something, you know. Or but... switch to another, um, well, I don't know if you have enough bobbins, but you could get yourself some braids and switch to some different, you know, have a couple of different spinning projects going because it is going to be time for the summer spin in. Yeah. So, well, I think I am going to, I was thinking about that before we started recording. So I'm going to try and finish for a summer spin in. I'm going to try and finish this, the Manx Lawton. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and finish that. And then I think I'm going to try and do a a combo spin or I have some braids, just two braids. I was thinking of combining. Mm -hmm. So do something with that. Yeah. So. Nice. That might be a nice, yeah. that might be a nice way to kind of just put an end to the, the bad knitting <laughs> by not knitting at you know all. I think, <laughs> you know, I think part of it is, I'm going to say is I think I'm making, I, it's all, I'm making stuff for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you think true. about it, I'm making this sweater for Ben, the sweater for my brother. Mm-hmm. And then what else? Well, you I, were doing I, I mean, those, I that- those tea cozies. Tea cozies. I got another tea cozy I have to make. And it's like, ugh, this knitting for other people. <laughs> you know, because like this, I have to say this Navia tradition, this yarn, I have to put hand cream on when I knit with it because it's so drying to my hands. Mm-hmm. It's, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's just like, this is the type of yarn it is. It's not super pleasant to yeah. knit with. Mm-hmm. We're not like, you know, the, the hand spun I was knitting with. I love knitting with it. This is, this is a this is a woolly wool. <laughs> right, right. So it's it's not a yarn I ever would have purchased. Yeah. Um so that's sort of part of it too, I think, is not really not really into yeah. it. Yeah. I mean the that much. the yarn the yarn wasn't your choice. Um mm-hmm. the original pattern wasn't your choice. No. Yeah. And no. then with Ben's sweater you had some challenges. With mm-hmm. your first pattern, and then you've had some challenges just having him like knit for someone who's not there. And I know there yeah, are people yeah. who do that. You know, they knit for people that they don't have them try it on all the time. But I, I mean, mm-hmm. I constantly try stuff on when I'm knitting for myself. Yeah, and so I think yeah. that would be really yeah. challenging to be knitting mm-hmm. something that you know, especially when you're knitting it for the second time because the first one didn't work, and you really don't want to have to rip out again. So you want to make yes. sure it's right. <laughs> so Mark's, I've ripped out twice. Mm-hmm. So I'm on my third attempt at this sweater for him. Yeah. Okay, that is love. 
or stupidity. I'm not quite <laughs> sure which it is, but anyway. Okay, enough of my project. Let me hear about your projects about Okay. Because you do have, yeah, let me hear about yours. Okay. What's going so, on? So, yeah, I actually, it's a good thing I have the trailer to talk about because um, I don't really have much to talk about in terms of my projects. Um, so, I can tell you that the garter squish blanket which was already done, but I have it in the show this time because I actually slept under it. We used mm -hmm. it. We used it in the trailer. I brought it for the trailer. It was the kind of the bedspread that we had. And I got lots of compliments on it. So some of the trailer people are also yarn people. Of course. Yes, <laughs> of course. There are some overlap. And I'm, and I, yeah, chicken and bees too. I bet, right? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know how much of how much of the this is, but there were a couple of people who recognized that I had made it and asked mm -hmm. me, you know, "Did you make that blanket?" and mm -hmm. and were working on their own, you know, or saw my my knitting while I was there and and asked about mm -hmm. it. So yeah, um, so yeah, slept under it. Was great. It looks it looks really nice in the trailer. So I'm super. Um, I'm super happy about how it turned out and being able to use it. Um, I was talking. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the picture you sent me, the colors work really well in there, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have all that sort of um, light wood, <clears throat> you know, all the paneling yeah. is the light wood. And then some of the burgundy kind of in there and the floor. And so the colors look really nice in there, I think. Thank you. Yeah, I I good job. I like it too. I think it looks good. I actually think, you know, this is the thing about the garter squish is that they can fit into a lot of different scheme color schemes. Mm -hmm. Because you've got those that one co color going going throughout with all the different colors that you that mm -hmm. you add in. I have not finished the mother the headless mother bear that I talked about <laughs> a month ago. <laughs> Mm -hmm. She's still, she's still headless uh, because I need to get some stuffing and I started another one. So I have now have two headless mother bears, <laughs> uh, one flat, one is fl totally flat and the other one has some stuffing in it. So I need to go get some stuffing so I can finish those up. Mm -hmm. And what I'm knitting on right now is the mohair vest, which I like it. But then sometimes I look at it and I think, is this actually really ugly? <laughs> <laughs> and what have you decided? Not, I mean, are, do you have a definitive no, decision? No, I'm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, it's it's not pooling or any. I mean, and there's a couple of places where it looks darker and a couple of places where the red shows through more. Um, but it's not doing any kind of funky um, pooling. I'm about now maybe eight inches down from the armhole and it's just, it's very hairy. This is a very hairy vest and I'm not sure what I'm going <laughs> to do about the collar because I seriously cannot imagine having this against my neck. Like my other vest where I zip it all the way up and I have like a turtleneck kind of. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, I don't think I would ever do that with this one. So I'm not sure. I've thought about using something that's not mohair, but I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. I might just get a black yarn and and do a you know do the border all in black, which ugh, knitting with black. I'm not sure I want to do that either. Now that I say so, how much? I well, <laughs> I'm going to say something. <laughs> Do you think you'll ever wear this? Th this yeah, vest? I, I do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's so mean of me. I don't mean to be mean like that, but I was like, do you love it? You don't know. I mean, you're unsure. I love mohair yarn. You know that, and okay. so uh, mm -hmm. I love the yarn. Um, I'm not sure I'm loving how it's knitting up, but I but I don't hate it either. It's it's just let's just say it will be unusual. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not, you know, on trend. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not the, mm -hmm. it's not the, you know, strand of kid silk haze that you carry along with your other yarn. This is full on, yeah, full yeah. on mohair. 
Right. <laughs> there, there was a reason why I was in the D stash room. Right. <laughs> Kelly. Exactly. <laughs> but but I do like mohair and I have in my memory one of my fond memories of clothing. I have lots of good clothing memories from my childhood, but in fact I have more clothing memories than I have food memories. We were talking about that. Aunt Betty and I were talking about that. And I, I really don't have a lot of food memories from my childhood, but I have a lot of clothing memories. And I have the fondest memory of this vest. And I think it was an Argyle type pattern mm -hmm. um, that I got in the boys department when I was in, I think, seventh or eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And it was this kind of full on mohair. Probably mm -hmm. not wool mohair, probably that Orlon acrylic mm -hmm. mohair because, you know, I mean, it was a kid's vest. And I yeah. wore that thing all the time. And it was unusual then. <laughs> it was one of those things. It was not one of those things that all the kids were wearing, you know? <laughs> yeah. All the cool kids yeah, were wearing. No, it, was, it was one of my, uh, one of my many... Uh, clothing items that was definitely not on trend, but I really loved. So I have a feeling that I might, I might not feel quite the same way about this as I felt about that, but it has the same vibe to me. So I think that's why I, why I decided to make this vest. And I, I think mm -hmm. it would be good. Like um, it'll be warm for sure. I think it'll be good for camping. Um, it'll be good for walking the dogs when it's cold outside. So I yeah, I think I'll get I think I'll get somewhere out of it. I don't know that I'll I don't know that it will be my go to piece. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. But I'm working on it. Um it's the Rosa Parks colorway from a yarn company called Schaefer that isn't making yarn anymore. And the the name of the or the type of yarn was uh Dania Mohair. And the really odd thing about it is that it's hardly taking any yarn to make this. I mm -hmm. thought I had, I mean, I kind of debated whether I had enough to make, to make the vest, mm -hmm. but I also am making a vest that calls for, I think, DK. And this is at a bulky gauge. So I had, you know, I had mm -hmm. to reconfigure the pattern somewhat. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. The, uh, the jury will be out for a while on this one. <laughs> and i may it's so hot to knit on I mean, it's not warm super warm here but it's you know it's kind of hot and sticky to knit on and mohair flies up my nose and stuff so it's not the thing i grab to knit the most often either and mm -hmm. i don't have that much to choose from so that tells you something <laughs> <laughs> It's my only project besides Mother Bears. It was my only project, and I wasn't grabbing it to knit. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I I needed something for the for the road going down to pick up the trailer and bring it back. I I thought I would have more time to knit, but I it was really kind of a whirlwind looking at other people's trailers, talking to people about the trailer, um, finding out all the stuff and how it worked, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I didn't have much knitting time, but I did bring some leftovers. I have a pair of socks. They're um, tomato and mink, or mink and tomato was the name of the the braid. And it was Falkland mm -hmm. hand spun. And so I have a pair of regular socks out of it, but I had quite a bit of leftover yarn. So I grabbed that and cast on a pair of short socks. So just, mm -hmm. a, you know, about maybe a, maybe an inch and a half to two inch cuff. And mm -hmm. then I started the heel and that's about where I am. I think I turned the heel and that's all I've done is a tiny, tiny cuff and turn the heel. That's all the knitting. And I never, okay. and I, I hardly took out the vest. So I really didn't have mm -hmm. much. Well, and the dogs, we had the dogs with us. And so um, I did a lot of walking the dogs at the RV park because they, I wanted them to be good and they're a lot better if they've had exercise and, so mm -hmm. we did a lot of a lot of walking and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, those are my projects. Kind of s just the vest, um, some mother bears in the you know in the meanwhile, and then the barest start of a pair of of shorty socks. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of I'm kind of in that place where I don't know I don't know what to do. I do think so we sold the other the old trailer, the clubhouse, and this uh young woman came and she brought her dad cuz he had the truck with the hitch to pull the trailer home and her mom came too. Really nice people, super nice people. Um and we got to talking and her mom has this she said i have this sweater that i started but i never was able to finish it maybe you would be able to finish it and i <laughs> at first my thought was like oh no this you know mm-hmm. but <clears throat> but so i was kind of non-committal i said well you know i maybe maybe i would be able to do that i don't know um and and then she brought it up again and finally i thought you know what i'm not super excited about anything i'm knitting what the heck, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And so, and so I said, yeah, you know, send it to me and I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'm not going to guarantee that I'll be able to, you know, finish it, but, but send, send me what you have and I'll, I'll take a look at it and, and let you know. And if I can't, I'll send it back. And if I can, I'll, I'll do it. And she's like, and of course I'll pay you, you know? And so anyway, mm-hmm. I haven't heard from her um, since the trailer sold. And I'm wondering if maybe she feels like, oh, gosh, I was a little bit too forward to do that. Yeah. She, oh, I, yeah. This woman was just trying to be nice, you know, but she's like. <laughs> yeah. You know, once she got she's home. She's thinking that about you. Like, oh, she's trying to be nice. Yeah. but yeah. Or yeah. maybe her daughter, after they left, said, Mom, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so I thought, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll text um, the woman who bought the trailer and say, you know, let your mom know if she wants to send that. Um, to go ahead, you know, I, I'd yeah. be happy to try it. So we'll see. I don't know. It, just kind of something different. It kind of gave me an mm-hmm. idea like, oh, well, maybe that would be something different and, and fun to do. Mm-hmm. So, And then the other thing that I did, um, this isn't a knitting project, but I just wanted to give a shout out. We have a, a new me- a member who joined the, the Ravelry group, AJ. She introduced herself mm-hmm. and, and let us know that she has the Hooked and Booked podcast. And mm-hmm. she, um, she has a website, too. It's called, her name is, she, she goes by AJ, but her website name is KJ Crochet. And then Crochet is spelled with a K. And I'll have links okay. in the show notes. But anyway, she's from South Africa. And she has just maybe three episodes, but it's just a cute, it's a cute show. And, and I, I listened to it and I thought, oh, this is fun. So I listened to all her episodes. And then she was talking about another podcast um, called Crochet Conversations. And she's interested, AJ is interested in having more people podcasting who don't have American accents. She said she feels like mm. all of the pod, the knitting podcasts that she listens to, and maybe a lot of the other podcasts she listens to also, um, you know, are people with American accents, and there's not a oh, lot of okay. voices from elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so she was promoting this other podcast, um, for these two women from Singapore. And so I went and listened to it too. And it's also very cute. It's called Crochet Conversations. And it's two women, Inez and Mel from Singapore. Okay. And um, right. the most recent episode, they're taking you through their house, like room by room, talking about what crochet is in their house. And mm-hmm. I thought that was really, I thought that was really cute. So anyway, I, I'd like to give a, a recommendation for the Hooked and Booked podcast. Um, and crochet conversations, and I've linked to both of them in the in the show notes. If anybody's if anybody's interested, and I thought you know that's that's maybe for, why I said to you maybe you need to crochet something because I'm thinking maybe maybe it's time for me to crochet something because I'm just not mm-hmm. super excited by anything that that I'm working on right now. So maybe I just yeah. need a, yeah. a new inspiration, and the trailer yeah. is a big inspiration. Because mm-hmm. now I can think of all sorts of things that I could make for the trailer, you know. So, you know, like the cover, yeah. the cover for your toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, I'm and, actually I mean, kidding, you but could, <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Well, oh, oh, you are, no, but no, you need. Uh, you can uh, 
pot holders and dishcloths mm-hmm. and hand towels and yeah and uh and especially and then those, you've got the blanket those um those pot holders and like what your great aunt what your your aunt ruth made you know the oh yeah great aunt ruth the 1950s yeah. style of of crochet pot holders um mm-hmm. really kind of interesting she did those really she did those really cute pot holders that um I don't know how she did it, but there's rickrack mm-hmm, in there. Mm-hmm. So you see part, you see one point of the rickrack, but not the other point of the rickrack. So it makes all these little triangles, kind of or something. Yeah, I'm not just, yeah. I've never seen a pattern like that. But um, and I was also going to say too that I um, seen I have not seen crochet patterns for the for pillows. But knitted pillows, I see, mm, you know, mm-hmm. covers that with color work, and that might be kind of fun too. Yeah, because yeah, um, you're going to need some pillows on the sofa. Yeah, is to knit something, a cover, or crochet something. Like, yeah, you, know, um, you did the bee, the bee pillow, but something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I think, uh, I, I think I might get into or weave. Well, yeah, yeah. weaving too. Um, yeah, I think I might make. Um, Robert brought. Uh, regular bath towels and we use the shower at the at the rv park not the shower in the trailer but one of the issues with the towels is that they take up so much space and then Mm -hmm. you have to get them to dry and hetty had been talking in the winter weave along about the spa towels that she made because Mm -hmm. in santa cruz it's kind of damp where she lives and Mm -hmm. and she wanted towels that would she was experimenting with different weaving structures weave structures um to see if she could get some towels that would that would dry quickly you know be absorbent but also dry quickly Mm -hmm. and then also they take up less space you know Mm -hmm. those heavy um terry cloth towels Mm -hmm. they not that we don't have the space, but they take up more space. And so, yeah, you know, if we could, if we could find, if we, if I could weave something that might, that might be really kind of a, a cool mm-hmm. idea. So, so yeah, I have some, I have some other inspirations that I haven't had in a while or haven't mm-hmm. ever had really um, that, mm-hmm. that'll be kind of, kind of fun. So maybe someone else's sweater and then maybe some crochet and mm-hmm. we'll see, we'll see ne- Check check with us next time, listeners, to see if we've improved our attitudes. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, I'm hoping my I'm hoping that my well maybe it is all my attitude. Hopefully my um act, well it's funny thinking about my attitude because I made the comment that part of all these projects I've been doing have been for other mm-hmm. people. Um, it makes me sound so selfish, <laughs> but um, you know it's it, your hobby. But, uh, it's my hobby, but I'm doing this, but um. I uh, was down working in the basement and um, I pulled out uh, because I finished the the socks. Remember that I had lost the blue, the navy blue for the toe? Oh, yeah. And I mm-hmm. found it in the last episode. So I finished that sock. Oh, I didn't put that in my... Another finished my, project. Um, I Yes, I completely forgot. I did not put that in my finished um, objects, but um, I did finish that. And so... Instead of putting the navy away, I knew that I had bought a skein of yarn for my brother. He had picked it out, and the navy would work really well with it for heels and toes. So I pulled out that skein of yarn and wound it into a cake to cast those on for him. <laughs> and I'm thinking maybe I should not do that, given that, um, yes, I'm thinking that this is a, I, I, I should have a conversation with myself. Um, yeah, maybe you need so. to do something. Do some self-indulgent knitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To go yeah. along with your your uh, projects for other people. You know what I'd like to knit is um, uh, I have a combo spin that I made. Kind of green. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty one with the and silk. I've, and mm-hmm. I've, never, I've never knit that up, and I would sort of like to knit that. But well, there you go. Start that one. Yeah, there's maybe one. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Enough complaining. I'm. <laughs> this is gonna be. Uh, everyone, everybody's gonna want me to finish these projects as soon as possible, so they don't have to hear about it anymore. Anyway, okay. Next order of business. I'm in the process of getting all of the winter weave along um, gift cards purchased, 
So if mm-hmm. you won in the Winter Weave Along, you'll be hearing from me or getting an email with your gift card information, um, either already or very shortly. I also have uh, sent out all of the project or all of the prizes, finally, for the stitches giveaway that we did. Mm-hmm. I sent them out today. And I think that's the okay. only business that we have. Um, we do still have the speak pipe. Uh, speak pipe. Sp- <laughs> <laughs> they need to change their name. No one can say it. I know. Speakpipe.com forward slash to use. T-W-O-E-W-E-S. Um, you can go there and you can leave a message about your favorite local yarn store, or you can send it to us in an audio file, send it via email. Again, that's to use at to use vibrantadventures.com. You can email us an audio file from your phone um, or your computer or wherever. And tell us about your favorite yarn shop. We'd love to hear um, all about your yarn shop in your area. So I think that's Mm -hmm. really all the Blanket along ends this week. We talked about yeah. That. So let's just uh, let's just say what's go- so the stash busting blanket along ends May thirty first. Mm-hmm. So that, um, and then the summer spin in starts June first, and that and that will go. So one ends on the thirty first, and the next um, events or um, along or whatever contest starts um, the next day, June first. And that will go the entire summer, and it ends September 5th, which in the United States is Labor Day. Mm-hmm. So we talked about this before. Memorial Day is sort of the official start of summer, and, which is in May. And then Labor Day is sort of the unofficial um, end of summer. Mm-hmm. And so the summer spinning will be June 1st through September 5th. And then, again, we're going to be at the Black Sheep Gathering in Albany, Oregon. Um, for, and that's June 24th through 26th. Mm-hmm. And that Saturday, we'll have a meetup at the trailer. Yeah. Um, and Kelly, what did we say? 3.34? Yeah. Should we mm-hmm. just pick a time? Yeah. Let's just be I safe. I think that's good. 3.34-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not um, like there's so a, you know, you, a, a definite, it's not like a, well, you know, it's a party. So come. <laughs> Fashionably late. Come after 3.30. <laughs> We might not be there. We might not be there if you come before 3.30. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully people who are coming, we know a few people are coming yeah. to Black Sheep. Um, and uh, and maybe so we'll see nice some people meet. who we've met in previous years who mm-hmm. are going to be there too. They haven't had yeah. Black Sheep for a couple of years. So mm-hmm. this will be really good. It'll be fun to be back to another fiber festival. Yes. Okay, Kelly, I think that's everything. Yeah, I do too. Is there anything else? No, I think that's it. Next episode, um, I want to talk a little bit more about my plans for the summer spin-in. Uh, what I'm going to do with the fleeces in my garage, maybe. Oh, So. Okay. Uh, but but yeah, that's for next time. Maybe I'll have a sweater to work. <laughs> yes, maybe <laughs> it'll arrive in the mail. Someone else's sweater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it'll give us something to talk about, right? <laughs> yes, I know. Well, we'll talk in two weeks, and we'll find out if you have a sweater that you're gonna work. On. Okay, sounds good. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit twousefiberadventures dot com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.